bodies of Joseph Otero, his wife Julie, their daughter Josephine, and their son Joseph II were discovered in their East Wichita home. The victims had been bound, gagged, and strangled with a cord. We have a quadruple homicide in a, in a family neighborhood in Wichita, Kansas, in the middle of America. That just doesn't happen. People in Wichita didn't know who it was. We didn't know what kind of person would do that. We just wanted them behind bars. I don't understand how somebody that could be so protective of his own children could murder other children. He had just an incredible ability to compartmentalize. Rader called it cubing. The way the cubing works is you have multiple sides to a cube. When he's on the face of it, those sides are all part of him, but he's not aware of them. He doesn't see them. He only is able to look out from one face, but he can switch it very fluidly to the next side of the cube if he needs to, whatever the situation calls for. He could leave a crime scene, come home, clean up, go to bed, get up, and start another day. Even when he wasn't killing, he was still looking for the possibility. Killers like Dennis Rader, they're called power control killers. And they love the power, they love the control, and they want the attention. What's a natural way to get attention without identifying yourself is to interact, call the media. On October 22, 1974, Don Granger, who was a columnist for the Wichita Eagle, received a phone call from somebody who's claiming to be BTK. This guy tells him to look in the city library, he tells him a very specific place, goes to the engineering section, in fact, tells him the shelf and the book to look for. The police go, find the book, and there is a letter that describes the Otero murders in detail. The police did pick up somebody, three guys, for the Otero murders. This was in the newspaper, and Rader was upset. He didn't want someone else to get credit for his murders. He's somebody who, who really seeks attention, and so when he's not getting it, it upsets him because his identity in life is committing these crimes. He wanted to show that he knew who killed the Oteros. He had done it alone. He knew all the details. He proved that by writing the details out. He goes point for point where each one of the Oteros were found in the house, what they were wearing. They knew it had to be him because nobody had that level of detail. So it's kind of like, I'm your guy, but you're not going to figure out who I am. In the letter, he suggests the moniker BTK, which would stand for Bind, Torture, Kill. It was his nom de plume, and that's what he wanted to be called, because that's what he did. He said, I like to bind them, I like to torture them, and I like to kill them. In July of 1975, Raider became a father for the first time. My brother's three years older than me. And suddenly, he's now a real family. He and his wife are overjoyed to have a child. He was working for ADT, the security company. He got to be in people's homes. To my dad, like the, the person that committed breaking and enterings and stalked people, I would imagine that sort of gave him that side of him like a thrill. But then he starts getting a little bit restless. From 1974 to 1977, he will kill three more women, a college student named Catherine Bright, a mother of three named Shirley Vian, and a 25-year-old named Nancy Fox. I was born in 78, and my dad murdered a young woman when my mom was three months pregnant with me. That kind of stuff happens to somebody else, but not to someone in your family. My name's Beverly Fox, and uh, Nancy and I were sisters. Nancy Fox was a hard-working young lady, worked two jobs. She lived by herself in a duplex. What she wanted was to get married, to have kids, you know, to have a family. Uh, she loved kids. How did he find her? How did he pick her out? Why Nancy? Dennis Rader will describe that he saw and noticed Nancy Fox when she was getting mail one day. This was what he called his perfect crime. This case, Nancy's case, went exactly how he planned it. Nobody else was in the house. She wasn't expecting anybody else. Um, he was not going to get interrupted. 
this one worked out the way his fantasies happened in his head. The next day, Raider did something unusual. He found a phone booth and he called in the murder of Nancy Fox. The caller said, reporting a homicide. Police went to that address and found Nancy Fox dead, bound and strangled on her bed. You will find a homicide at 43 South Pershing, Nancy Fox. So when you heard this, did it sound like your father? You can hear like that clip, the way my father could talk. I like, I, that was another, like these things just start clicking. Oh my God, it really is my father.